Uh, thank you very much, and it's really, uh, really an honor and a pleasure to be here today to support Andrew uh, and someone who works in Albany and has been in Albany for a long time. I need, I need Andrew up there working with me. I need someone who's going to care about this community, not someone who just votes for the what the leadership tells him up there. For many years, I've been in Albany fighting for this community and all of the communities in Southwest Brooklyn. I need a partner like Andrew in there, and I'm so happy happy to see here today such a broad spectrum of the community uh, supporting us today. I mean, I was thrilled. I'm looking around. I see so many community leaders, not just elected officials. And that's when you know that community is looking for someone to have real leadership in this community. We've had people representing us who really do vote with the interest of upstate New York and Long Island. And I'm, as I'm just going to end, I'm proud to see we even have people uh, from Senator Golden's office here supporting us today. So it's a real pleasure to be here today. So thank you very much for that support. Andrew, we're going to go on and take victory. Thank you. Thank you, Assembly Member Body. At this time, I'd like to invite Councilman Vincent Gentile up to say a few words. Thank you, thank you. It's a big tent, Peter, right? <laughs> thank you all for coming today as we launch the campaign for our new and next state senator, Andrew Bernardes. You know, it, it, is, it is so uh, exciting to be here at this point. Uh, you know, people, uh, he says he's a new voice in our community. But you know what? He may be a new voice on the political scene, but Andrew Gernardis is an established voice in our community. He definitely has been working for many, many years uh, for this community, and he wants to extend it now throughout the State Senate District. He's worked... Uh, uh, through his church, he has given many, many hours and hours of service. Uh, he's learned leadership skills as an Eagle Scout uh, in this community. And then I've had the privilege of having him on my staff from 2003 to 2005, where he learned how to serve our constituents in an elected official's office. And he worked hard, he knew how to interact with people, and using his leadership skills and his skills and knowledge of this community, Andrew was a wonderful, great uh, staff member, and now he takes the next step and becomes an elected official in his own right. And that is exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Woo! We're all uh, so proud of Andrew. I'm proud of him, uh, certainly as, as someone who helped him get into uh, this field. Uh, his, his parents may think uh, he's crazy, but I'm very proud of him. <laughs> no, I'm sure everyone is very, very proud of Andrew. And certainly he takes on a task that is not an easy task without everyone helping out. And so that's why we ring the bell today and say today is the first day of a new era for this Senate district, a new era for our community, and a new era for Andrew Gernardis in his quest to become a state senator, but also to continue to serve and widen his service to all of us. So ladies and gentlemen, we uh, welcome Andrew Gernardis to the political scene today but we also call on you to help us make this a reality in November. So with your help and your assistance and your uh, continued support, I now introduce to you the next New York State Senator from our district, Andrew Gernardes! <laughs> Thank you very much, Councilman Gentile, for your introduction. Now, let's have a round of applause for our city councilman, yeah. someone who spent his whole career giving back to his community and putting the public interest first. Uh, Vinny, if I could do half of what you've done in your career, I'll consider myself very successful. So thank you for setting a great example for me. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for being here today uh, to join me. It's great to see so many friendly and familiar faces out here, uh, despite the cold weather. Uh, my name is Andrew Gennardis, and I am running for the New York State Senate. Yeah. 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 
talk about why. Let me tell you a little bit about how I got here. 94 years ago, after a voyage that began halfway around the world, my grandfather stepped off the deck of a ship named the Philadelphia and arrived in a place called New York. I don't know exactly what it was that brought him here, but I, I like to think he believed in the unlimited possibilities that New York offered to anyone who came here and gave it their best shot. Here in Bay Ridge, my parents raised me and my siblings to take pride in our community because this is a place where we help each other out, where we shovel our neighbor's sidewalk, look after each other's kids, or if we see someone on the avenue, we always say hello. I took my parents' lessons to heart. I became an Eagle Scout and my church's Boy Scout troop. I worked for our city councilman, helping to improve the quality of life of our neighborhood. And today I'm a member of the local community board. Service and community aren't just words, but values that mean a lot to me. As an aide to a U.S. Senator, I, I tackled important issues like child support enforcement and veterans' benefits. I conducted a terrorism investigation into the release of the Lockerbie bomber. Today, I work at Citizens Committee for New York City and give grants to community groups. I've seen firsthand the, the power that hardworking people have to improve and make a difference in their communities. But I've also seen how, time and time again, politics can just get in the way. People today are frustrated with the way government is working, or I should say not working. We're upset that, with the exception of people like Councilman Gentili and Peter Abadi and a few others, our politicians aren't speaking for us, aren't voting in our best interests. A recent poll showed that 74% of New Yorkers disapprove of our state legislature. 74%. A few years ago, the New York State Legislature was labeled one of the most dysfunctional state legislatures in the country. On every conceivable measure, on ethics, accountability, transparency, efficiency, you name the test, Albany had a failing grade. Things have started to get a little bit better with Governor Cuomo in office, but one good year doesn't erase the harms done by decades of dysfunction, and we're fortunate to have a governor with a vision to help make things better. But we can do better and we must do better. New York is facing serious challenges in the years ahead. Our unemployment rate is 8%, our roads and bridges are crumbling, our bus and train services are being cut while our fares keep going up. Our state government still lacks the accountability, transparency, and honesty that we deserve. And worst of all, some of the politicians we've elected to office and we've trusted with our votes aren't doing much about it. That's why we're standing here in front of Fort Hamilton today an anchor in our community that represents the best of our past and the promise of our future. I went to this school, as did my sister, my brother, and my mother. It helped shape the person I am today. But Fort Hamilton, despite all of its great accomplishments, is a symbol of failing education policies that have weakened <coughs> our schools and set back our students. This school is one of the most overcrowded high schools in all of New York City. Every day here, teachers strive to educate 1,500 more students than this building has room for. Across our district, more than half of the schools are over capacity. And across the city, nearly half of all public school students face similar circumstances. That is just unacceptable. After a decade of confusing school reforms, we're left wondering why our students are still performing so slowly, so poorly. New York spends more than any other state on education. And yet 75% of our high school graduates aren't ready for college. That means that hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers won't have the same opportunities that I did, that my parents did, or my grandparents did, to build a life here and to give back to the city that they love. And that is just unacceptable. For too long, our schools have been shortchanged by Albany's easy fixes. My mother has been a public school educator for nearly 20 years. She would never say no to, say, new computers or new textbooks for her students. But she'd also say that what good are those things if we don't have enough seats in the classroom or our students aren't being taught how to use them? Rather than solve these problems head on, our politicians throw money at them or, or put the blame on parents and teachers. That's the real problem facing our schools. Manipulating test scores and demonizing teachers is not a plan for real reform. We can do better and we will do better. But make no mistake about it, this campaign is not just about our schools. It's about the future of our community, our city, and our state. It's about standing up for hardworking middle class and, and working class families and small businesses, because they're the ones who will help get our economy back on track. 
It's about standing up for our veterans and our seniors by keeping our promises to them because they made the sacrifices and they endured the struggles that allow all of us to stand here today. It's about standing up for our neighbors, whether gay, straight, Arab, Irish, Muslim, or Christian, because when you violate the rights of some, you violate the rights of all. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's about standing up for our environment and our heritage, because destroying both in the name of economic development is a 19th century plan for a 21st century world. So this November, we have a choice. We can stick with the status quo and re-elect someone who's been part of Albany's decades of dysfunction, someone whose record in office has hurt working class and middle class families by weakening rent laws and defending millionaires, someone who calls himself a fiscal conservative while allowing the state budget to rise by $40 billion, or someone who inexplicably misses key votes on issues like gun safety, the environment, and the economy. We can take that road, or we can do better. We can say enough. After a decade of false promises and short-sighted solutions, of saying one thing in the community and doing another when the cameras are off in Albany, we deserve better. We need... We need a new voice with smart new solutions to help guide our state to a more prosperous future. A new voice knows that public service is hard work and that talking tough is not enough. A new voice will be accountable and responsive to everyone in the community, not just the catered few. A new voice who will reject politics as usual and stand for politics as they should be. I'm Andrew Gennardis, and I'm running for the New York State Senate because I want to be that new voice for our community. Fixing Albany and getting New York back on track isn't going to be easy, but I know that together, with your help, this is a fight we can win. We have a lot of work to do this year, so let's get to it. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you very much.